I'm Dr. Carrie Horn, author of A Soul Aligned, How God Heals His Creations, and Heart Known Series Workbook, a practical application workbook for biblical healing. In this video, I'd like to talk with you about whether or not Christians should be using personality tests. So during my training, there was a lot of hoopla about, you know, personality tests like Myers-Briggs and things like that. And it never really quite sat right with me. To be honest, it always kind of felt like reading a horoscope. That's about as legitimate as it felt to me. <laughs> and it was always kind of a, an annoying like pet peeve to me when people would say, what are you? <laughs> I'm an ENFJ or whatever. I don't even, I'm not even that familiar with that test anymore and don't really care. I will tell you one thing about me is that I always identified myself as an extrovert. Um, I always felt that I needed to be around people. And, you know, Myers-Briggs gave me a perfect explanation for that. I needed that energy, right? I needed energy from other people. Well, that's kind of the language of the occult. Everything's about this like energy. And so for a while, even though I really didn't believe in the test, there was that concept of introvert extrovert that I kind of bought into. But I will tell you that as I've healed in Christ, that I have become more of what would have been identified as an introvert. And it's not because it has nothing to do with whether or not I needed energy from other people or whether I'm conserving energy being alone. I'll tell you what it has to do with. I'm not part of this world anymore. And really, there's sort of this like pathologizing idea about introverts that they're not that fun <laughs> or there's something wrong with them or they're shy or something like that. I'm really not shy. And I'm perfectly socially adept, capable of having a conversation. I'm capable of having a good time. I just don't really belong to this world anymore. And so more and more, I'm finding that it's more enjoyable for me to just be spending time between me and God. Now, prior to my healing in Christ, I always needed to be around people I needed to, you know, when I was an adolescent or I was a young adult, if I was home on Saturday night, it was like the end of the world, like my life was over. And I was raising a child, you know, as I was, as I was older. However, it was always really important for me to have like people over and have dinner parties and holiday parties and things like that. And that's because I was insatiably alone. I just felt insatiably alone. It wasn't because I was necessarily getting energy or even good energy from the people that I was hanging out with. It was because of an intolerable void inside of me. And that was actually a really dangerous place for me to be. Because what it led to was me hanging out with other people who had intolerable voids and some dangerous people and being in dangerous situations. So now... I'm to only talking about one personality test, right? But I'm talking about one aspect of that personality test that when we start identifying ourselves by who the world tells us we are or who the world tells us we should be, we're in big trouble. And it would have been more beneficial for me at that time to have been told by one of the various Christian therapists that I was seeing what was really going on with me that I had an intolerable void that needed to be filled by God, that it was good for me to be separated from the world because that's who I've been called to be, that it was good for me to have that time and hone that relationship with God, just between me and God. And then in order for me to have a healthy relationship with anybody else, I needed that relationship with God. Now, here's the other problem with personality tests. And I'm not really familiar with the Enneagram, to be honest. I don't care. I don't care about any of these tests. I think they're dumb. And like I said, I take them about as seriously as I would a horoscope, which is not serious at all. And I firmly believe that they are incredibly dangerous. So I steer clear of all of that. In fact, if you know me, if you've known my videos, if you're familiar with the book, you know that I don't believe in labeling people at all, not with diagnoses, not with personalities. 
There is an assessment that I have given in my practice that um, does take a look at certain things that people are struggling with, but I don't use that incorrectly. I don't use it for the purpose of labeling people or giving them some sort of a static, you know, death sentence or something. I believe what God has said that he can heal his people and I have seen him heal his people. But here's the thing. The way that I have people contact me wanting so desperately for me to give them a diagnosis, for me to label them so that they can then have an excuse about why it is they are the way they are. A lot of people actually would prefer that over personal accountability. In fact, I would say most people would prefer that over personal accountability, even though personal accountability can actually lead to changing their situation. Because that's just where we are in history. We're living in a time in history where people are just plain wicked and unaccountable and lovers of self. And they use these labels in relationship to make other people accommodate to them. And from what I understand, without knowing anything about the Enneagram, but I do know about personality tests, and it sounds to me like this is just another recycled personality test, that people then start requiring others to relate with them based on their type. And then they absolve themselves of personal accountability based on their type. It's the same darn thing that people do with diagnoses as well. You can't go there. You can't touch on my issues. Um, you can't talk to me like that. You can't be honest with me because I'm fragile. And frankly, that's a bunch of garbage. It doesn't help anyone and it destroys relationships. So I think you know the answer to the question, should Christians be doing personality tests? Absolutely not. Now, as far as tests like the Enneagram go, I understand that there are pagan roots to the Enneagram. But look, we need to be able to discern and recognize what is of God and what is not. All of these things have pagan roots. They're enacting a pagan tradition right now. Whether or not they were doing it in the past they're doing it right now. Are they leading to the fruit of the spirit? Are they bringing you closer to God? Because if they're not, you got to throw them out. The bottom line is everything that you need to know, God has already given you the manual for that. So stop looking outside of it. Stop looking outside of the Bible. He's already given you a manual for life. He's given you a manual for relationships, for salvation, and for healing. If you want to know who you are, you got to find out who you are in Christ not by some method of the world. And even in that assessment that I have given in my practice, when I'm using that, I'm not using that in such a way where I'm saying, these are the things that you struggle with. These are the things that I'm not telling a person who they are. I'm asking them, is this a fit? Does this describe what's going on with you? And if it doesn't, we throw it out. But we are going to talk about what is going on with you because if I'm working with anyone, I require personal accountability according to what Christ has said. And he says, we got to look at the heart. We have to examine our hearts and we've got to receive his ministry and sanctification. Now, in terms of these other personality tests, I don't believe that they're doing that. They're not looking at these kinds of things. They're looking at a label so that they can then absolve the person of anything else. I mean, they're not holding, bringing you into accountability. They're not bringing you into a godly life. So I am firmly against them. And especially because they begin to be used by people as an excuse for bad behavior, as an excuse for how other people need to treat them. So please be careful of these things. Please recognize what is pagan, what is not of God in this world. Whether or not it's got pagan roots or you can track it on the internet or the internet says something favorable about it or unfavorable, you need to be discerning by the Holy Spirit, not by Google. And from what I understand, the Enneagram is being pitched to people within Christianity as though it's some sort of like Christian self-help. I don't know. I have no idea how they're pitching it. It doesn't really matter. God has a manual for you. Everything you need to know is in the Bible. And these things fundamentally are in opposition to the Bible. I don't even believe that they can be used in a biblical way. Now, on the other side of that, I want to kind of explain the assessment that I've historically done within my practice. 
that assessment is, it produces like symptoms, right? And remember what I said, symptoms or observation is fine. God talked about that. He talked about in Leviticus 13, I think it is, where he had people go to the priest if they had a defiling skin disease, um, if there was a mold in their house, that priest would then write down what the symptoms were. And the reason why is because he was taking note of the condition before and then again after the person had gone into isolation and returned to God in order to see if there had been any change. And if there hadn't been any change once they had returned to God or been placed into isolation and given an opportunity to return to God, if there was no change, they'd be cast out of the camp. Why? Because God requires us to receive his ministry, to return to him. He's told us, if you come to me, I will not turn you away. If you return to me, I will heal you. That's a promise by God. So if you're not healing in some way, shape, or form by demonstrating change, then you didn't return to God. That's the implication. So I want to clarify, because I don't want this to present a stumbling block for anyone. The test that I've historically done observes. It asks a series of questions. It observes what the symptoms are or narrows down what the symptoms are. And that way I can kind of speak to, okay, this is where this is based on what we know of, of God's word. This is going with this and this is going with that. And we want to keep these things in mind. And also as a basis for understanding how a person is growing, is that still a part of what they're struggling with? So that is standing on the word. That's a different kind of thing. Now, nowhere in the word does it say that God's shepherds get to go around diagnosing and labeling his kids. That's not something that is biblical. And so it's not something that I do. I hope that clarifies so that there's no stumbling block for anyone. So what do you think about this? Is this something that you have had experience with? And if so, what is your experience? I'd love to hear your feedback on this topic. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. And I'll see you in the next video.